Hey everyone, I'm Tony with Berry Mountain Homestead. It's just me today because as you know, or may not know if you're new, Michelle, my wife, is a teacher and she is getting ready for back to school and setting up her classroom right now and just dealing with everything that goes with that. Trying to teach both online and in person at the same time. And I think she gets a pass for not being here. So today, as a lot of people are doing, I am gonna be starting our fall garden. It is the middle of August, which means it's the middle of summer. It is time to start thinking about fall. Now, we're still in the process of getting up on our own property and we're living in the RV that's behind us right now. So we're not exactly sure where we're gonna plant this stuff, but the seeds need to go into the ground. So it's time to plant. So a couple things before we get to the actual fall planting that I wanna speak with you guys about. First up, thing I've noticed lately that's really been bugging me and I've never had this problem before, so I had to do my own research and figure out what was going on. Our peppers, mainly our giant Marconi peppers, are having these black lesions and that are recessing and kind of spreading out and we're used to having blossom end rot, calcium deficiency, inconsistent watering, all those things factor into that. But this year, we are having this problem, if you can see this. There it is. See that lesion right there? It's kind of soft and mushy in the center. That's happening on a lot of our peppers, and I didn't know what it was. So I did some research, and to the best of my knowledge, it looks like it's anthracnose, which is a fungal disease that is common on peppers, but plenty of other plants. And it gets stored and overwinters in the soil or the actual seeds. Now we bought all of these peppers behind me, which look like they're doing great and are producing tons of fruit from a local nursery. So I don't know if the local nursery has a problem with anthracnose and that's what's causing this because they overwintered on the seeds or if the soil that we bought from a local sawmill that sells topsoil it could have been in the soil too because it overwinters in there so i'm not really sure where it came from but i have figured out a solution apparently the best solution is well there's two solutions that they recommend one is an actual chemical that we're not buying right now because we have neem oil which is a fungicide and apparently works really well. You can also use copper spray. Um, we've never used copper spray, but I was doing a little research on it. It seems like it's a great, great idea and that it works for a lot of things. So we've been a little lax on the neem oil lately. Things get crazy. We're trying to buy a house and garden, and I just went back to work a month or so ago. So we kind of let some of the garden go by the wayside a little bit, and that happens when you get busy sometimes. So tonight I am going to neem oil that. I'm not gonna show it because it's gonna be dark out when I do it most likely. But I just wanted to share that little tidbit with you guys that I just learned today from doing research because I wanted to stop. I don't want my fruit to rot while it's still on the vine. That's ridiculous. We want as many peppers as possible. We like to freeze them and save them and we use them all winter long and all spring long and they are great frozen. Now, another thing I wanted to share with everybody before I actually get to planting our fall crops is I think I remember me and Michelle saying that we were getting a beater truck from my dad, like a farm truck, a general purpose farm truck with a plow on it, and that we needed you guys to help us name it. So I don't remember if we've shown it yet, but this is it. This is a 1989 Dodge Dakota with a plow on it. And my dad just gave it to us and it's rusty and it's awesome. It's old and it runs great. It only has 70,000 miles on it. We need everyone's help in naming this truck. If you can, comment down below and let us know what we should name the truck. Best comment wins. Uh, me and Michelle will decide that within a week after we post this video. I also wanted to talk to everyone about something else. We planted our carrots below our peppers so that they weren't in the full sun, which we thought was a good idea and that's what you were supposed to do we planted them underneath our tomatoes last year and they did great there so we thought you know plant them under the peppers peppers will shade them out 
they won't be as hot and when it's 95 degrees out and some of them are doing great and some of them are doing awful and they were all planted at the same time i have no idea i'm going to show you what i'm talking about so this is our garden bed that you guys saw us built the peppers are super tall on this side they're awesome and then down below it we planted a bunch of carrots you can see the carrot tops now when we're looking at our garden bed right here that direction is south which gets all the sun these carrots on this side look like this guys even see that little guy look at that little thing terrible but on this side the ones that are shaded out even more but are on the south facing side look like this look at that that is a beautiful purple carrot a little hairy but but that's not bad looking we've never grown purple carrots it's the first year for it can someone explain to me the difference on what's going on because i can't figure it out all right so for planting for the fall for our fall garden we have four things that i'm going to plant today we might try to do more later but i'm not really sure yet first up that we all, something we also did in spring our favorite romaine lettuce we are also going to do two varieties of kale this year. It's gonna be our first time growing kale and we're super excited. It's super frost hardy and we've been really enjoying throwing kale in other dishes that we don't usually throw it in to add some extra greens. We basically just use it like spinach. We have dinosaur kale, that really dark blue purple leaf stuff that we are so excited for. And we also, are gonna be planting this dwarf blue curled vates. I guess it's vates, I'm not sure. Another variety of kale and hopefully they do well and we get to keep them into the winter. And last but not least, broccoli. We have terrible luck with broccoli in the springtime. By the time it's mature and the heads form, there are just so many worms in it and bugs and it just gets destroyed. And we never get it early enough here in central Pennsylvania to get very good crop. But in the fall, there's less insect pressure and it tastes really good after a f the f first frost or two. And we're just, we're gonna try it again. Today, I'm gonna be planting the broccoli and the kale into our little red solo cups that we used for tomatoes and peppers and everything else this year because that worked out well for us and we don't know where we're gonna plant them yet. But for the romaine, which we don't wanna transplant, we are going to use our grow bags that we spoke about earlier this year. They're doing really well for our peppers and our zucchinis and everything else. So we're gonna try them again for the romaine, just like we did in the spring, and hopefully we get a ton. Romaine lettuce is going to go in right now. If I can open it. There it is. All right, and we did grow giant heads of romaine lettuce this year and they were fantastic, but I don't think it's worth it for the amount of space that you have to separate them. We like to grow it as just leaf lettuce, which works out pretty well for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this whole packet and I'm just going to, you see those? I'm just gonna take this whole pack of these little seeds and sprinkle it all over the surface and then cover it with a little soil and water it in just a little bit. I know you guys probably cannot see these seeds good in there, they're so small, but I swear I threw them in. I'm just gonna cover them with a thin layer of nice light potting soil, the little pat. And 
and a nice light water and hopefully they are good to go that should be it for the romaine it is lettuce is so easy you just throw it in the ground and water it and it pops up it's amazing you get fresh salads fresh greens for burgers everything you can imagine just from throwing it on the ground it's fantastic okay it is time for dino kale curly kale curly blue dwarf blue curled vates kale i don't know that variety we just grabbed it because it said kale and broccoli like i said before we are using our red solo cups we're using the same ones that we did in the springtime for tomatoes and peppers and everything like that. They already have holes drilled in them because we don't want to waste these. We want to use them until they're done. We don't like using plastic once and then throwing it away. That's just ridiculous. And it's easy and it works. If we had a terrible success rate, but it was still easy, that'd be worthless for us. We want something that is easy and has a great success rate. So like we showed in the spring, all we do is fill this up with soil, wet it down, plant a couple seeds, another quick water, and they're good to go. I love this method. You have to wet the soil before you put the seeds in because if you try to water it after with this really light potting mix, the seeds just kind of float away and you don't really know where they went. I think we are going to do broccoli first. How much broccoli is too much broccoli? Should I do a full thing? A full tray is 18. Yeah, I'll do 18. All right, I just labeled all of my cups. I scratched out what they were. This was the German green and now it's gonna be curly kale. These Hungarian wax peppers. Now it's dino kale. You can't even read that. I'm not good at this. Dino, there it is. So I've decided that I'm gonna do nine curly kale and nine dino kales. So now it's time to fill every cup. Watch how fast I can do it. Oh man, that was easy. Thank goodness I'm done. All right, it's time to plant. First up, we are going to do curly kale, which is these back nine over here. There's a seat up in the corner. Can you see those? Little tiny, little tiny seeds. All right. So I am just gonna poke a little hole, I guess. Not too deep. Uh, I'm just gonna drop a couple in. Not that you can see what I'm doing, but I am, I swear. I'm not just gonna go buy kale plants later. All right, that's plenty. Put these back in here and save them. God, you get like a thousand kale seeds in each packet. I wish I had a bigger garden. All right, and just cover them back up. That's easy enough. All right, on to dino kale. They look exactly identical. A little darker maybe than the other ones. I can't really tell. All right, on to the broccoli. This is early green broccoli. It's supposed to, six to day harvest is what they say. We'll see about that. 60 days from now is right around our first frost date. So that's perfect. It'll be a good time for harvest. Let's see if we can get you a better angle. There, that's better. How deep are these supposed to go? Quarter inch. 
Some of these are a little deeper than a quarter inch. All right, we'll figure it out as we go. I'm not lying. These look identical to the kale seeds. I couldn't, if they were sitting next to each other, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Look at that, it's the same exact thing. I'm really hopeful for the broccoli up here. It's a little bit colder climate than where we were when we were down south, about 40 minutes. Uh, we're one zone colder, hardiness zone, so, I mean, broccoli does well up here. Theoretically, there should be a little less insect pressure here. It's a little bit colder climate, but we are in the woods on the side of a mountain, and there's lots of insects here, and the bugs this year are just insane. The cabbage worms, the squash bugs, the tomato hornworms or tobacco worms, they are just awful. They're just destroying our plants. We can't even keep up with it. I think it's the mild winter. That's what's in my mind. We only got like two snows and it wasn't below freezing as long as it normally is. And I think that the bugs overwintered very well this year and they're just awful. So as much as I hate, hate to say this, I hope for a rough winter so that our first garden year up on our own property just isn't terrible with insects. There's something I want to show you down in the big garden. We were having problems with our tomatoes. We felt like we were missing fruit sets from our two week 95 degree weather heat wave that we weren't expecting that no one was expecting. And our tomatoes weren't ripening up fast enough. So I trimmed back some of the foliage and I'll show you guys what it looks like now. From the bottom of these tomato plants, pretty much from the second fruit set down, there's nothing. They all of a sudden just ripened right up and are looking good. The tomatoes all the way up. Those are all the black beauties. And then these guys, these Dr. Witchy's yellows, just out of nowhere started ripening up. I mean, they're just enormous. That's the size of my hand. I have one inside I wanna show you guys. It's huge too, our first, one of our first. They're just all huge and they look good, but we are missing all of the fruit sets in the middle here. Like we said last time, they just, they're done. But we just skipped one. They're coming back up top. We have more up top now on like the third and fourth ones. So it's not a total loss. We just missed a few. That's it. All right. So this is one of the first Dr. Witch's yellow we got. And it's massive. And I want to see how much it weighs. Zero, zero, zero. All right. Let's see how much it weighs. One pound, three tenths of an ounce. That's a one pound tomato. Look at that. That's crazy. All right, we're all planted up for fall now, at least the start of our fall garden. I don't know how much more we're gonna do. I really don't think we have a lot of room for everything. We're gonna take these carrots out that are in over here behind me in the pepper bed and probably plant a lot of the kale where the carrots were. Um, Cause by the time they're starting to get big enough where they need more space, the peppers should be about done. And we like it cause it's right next to our RV. So it's nice to run out and just grab some kale for whatever we need. Uh, the broccoli, uh, we'll see where that, that might end up being in pots, you never know. But anyways, thank you everyone for coming along with me on a solo video today. I really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to us yet, don't forget, hit that thumbs up button. You can also follow us on Instagram, berrymountain.homestead, and we'll catch you next time. Shout out to Benton, to the